After a wild first round in Brazil, the V8 Super Trucks Championship makes its way to Phillip Island in beautiful Australia. It's a wild round number two, and you're going to see all green flag coverage today here on Racebot TV and across Twitch and Socks Out Racing. Good afternoon. I'm Justin Prince. Along Simon the Booth tonight is Paul Smith for today's broadcast for what should be a wild one on this 2.76 mile circuit. Paul, we had an exciting first round with some exciting drivers making the leap into victory lane and are all set to go back to a circuit which last year had some crazy passes for position. Yes, uh, hello everybody. Uh, it was a really good first round of the championship. Dal uh, Dallas Pataska really uh, showed what a class driver he is in this uh, truck series in this Toyota Tundra. Tundra. So really he, he showed how well he did and how well he's adapted to this truck. Yes, indeed he has so far. Or, in fact, he's towards the top of the boards right now for qualifying. But more than that in a second. As right now, we'll start off with looking at your driver standings and the rest of your championships to start off the 2019 World Championship. Dallas Pataska, after the victory, has a total of 100 points with Bobby Zaleski in second. Thomas O'Leary finished off third in that race. Then you have Ben Cameron's David Williams, last week's hard charger in the top five in points with Eric Blix, James Kane, Michael Sherlock, Skurlock, I should say, with Chris Parnell and Paul Slavonic rounding out the top 10 in points. Of course, a lot of these drivers work as months teams for the 2019 season as in every season with Radicals Online Turn Racing on top of the boards, tied up in fact with VRS Goanna Simsport. Radicals Online JRT with Illusion Motorsport and Leppels Racing round on the top five with Smith Esports, Go Team Racing and Buck Jones Racing all receiving points for the opening round. There's also the Regions Championship for this season, a new championship different than in that we've seen with the road versus Ovo from last year. The United States leads by 10 points coming into the second round. The United Kingdom in second, Belgium with 65 points, Australia, Sweden, Czech Republic round up the six countries as the drivers coming from represent and are currently recording in the points. Let's look at the manufacturers. Toyota also on top of that side this season to start off. 92 points for Toyota, 74 for Chevrolet to start off the 2019 campaign. And some interesting runs in the point standings as we just discussed here, but it's going to be again an interesting race today. Let's take a look real quick at your minute cast presented by AccuWeather. AccuWeather, the official weather service of Socks Out Racing and the V8 Super Trucks World Championship. Today is going to be an interesting weather forecast for today. 81 degrees air temp for the start of today's action, as well as 51% humidity. Wind speeds that are about 8 miles per hour from the south with clear blue skies. It should be a very hot one today in terms of track temps on this 2.76 12 turn circuit here, Paul. Yeah, it should be a real challenge to keep your tyres in and really look after that truck and make sure that it, um, it performs to the uh, the peak of its abilities. We'll just bring up the qualifying times there on the left-hand side of your screen whilst we're just waiting for the session qualifying session to finish. Everyone's done laps apart from Connor Horn, who we're waiting for, and I believe he may be about to come out. And if he does come out of the pits, it'll be one lap that he'll be doing so um, yeah he's not going to have a lot of time here and in fact here he comes now out onto track you can see the heat haze it's a really really hot conditions here and tire tire preservation is going to be key for today's event Absolutely going to be key today. You see Horn coming on the racetrack. The top 15 times on the left side of your screen once again. Dallas Pataska on top of the boards by half a second once again over Bobby Zelensky. If the time sticks, that would not be a track record per se. The track record, a 120.912. The lap record by Bobby Zelensky as well, a 129.132. Both of those in the 2017 season. Victor Lobato, I should say, setting that initial time for track record. Track record is the qualifying record, while the lap records are during the race segment. Now, as you may be wondering, 
This is the first time seeing Horn. He is one of the few adi the new additions to the series for this oh, next round here. Von Glass, along with Aaron Karen, are racing with RSR Esports in the second round, making their debuts along with the talented Connor Horn here, Paul. Yeah, it's great to see so many new names and faces coming into this series. It just shows the popularity of the series that they have to have a pre-qualifying event just so that people can actually qualify to get into this race. So definitely it is one that uh, is, is growing and growing. And that's because the racing is always fantastic. We've seen it all of last year and the year before as well. How real how good and competitive this field is. And it's just going to keep on getting well, Connor Horn passing by the start finish line to start off his time. He's got a minute and 20 seconds to record a time. He might just barely make it to the checker flag if need be. For those that are wondering who was eliminated in pre-qualifying, Josh Mertz, Chase Berry, and Ryan Lange were all knocked out during pre-qualifying. Five absentees for this round as well. Justin Kruitoff, Daniel Thompson, Marco Mogren, who is on a leave of absence, Logan Clampett, James Kane. But, of course, it's a very challenging racetrack here I'd like to talk about, Paul, because as you see him coming out of Honda here, Connor Horn, this is a track where, especially in this section last year, a lot of chaos ensued. Yeah, it's, uh, it certainly did, and uh, there's opportunities to overtake. But Honda is going to be the best opportunity uh, to overtake. It's pretty tricky through uh, the S's here and up over the top of the mound. But then it's coming down into the hairpin here, downhill braking. So easy to lose control of the trucks. And again, we saw that a couple of times last year. But Connor Horn, he's able to do it. He's got about 15 seconds left of qualifying. It's going to be tight. I don't know if he's going to do it, though, and set a lap time. It's counting down, and uh, we're about to run out of time, and I don't think he's going to reach the timing line. Nope. I don't, th I don't nope. think it counted anyway. He might have went off in the grass, and, and, and I don't think he got it credited. No, he did not. So Connor Horn will have to start dead last and did not set a qualifying time. The only driver to do so. Let's take a look at the 20 drivers for today. Dallas Pataska on the pole today with a 129.782 by a half second over Bobby Zelensky. The second straight round, he was able to do so. Thomas O'Leary will start in row number two. Wallace Ben Cameron's in the four spot. Eric Blix will start off in P number five. Michael Skurlock starts alongside the outside for the Aussie. Row number right behind him in row four, rather, is David Williams. Paul Slovanic starts off in eighth position in the 131 range. Aaron Smith and Monica Paul will round out your top 10, with Chris Purnell and Clifton Cockrell rounding out the dozen. Danny Solo, he's shown some speed throughout the season. He starts off in the 132s today alongside the newcomer and Aaron Karen. Steve St Steelstad starts off 15th with Doc Stout and Von Glass right along behind them. Steven Dagger starts off 18th along with Aspen Belvin. And the only driver to not record a qualifying time is the New Jersey club member, Connor Horn. So 20 drivers set to take the field today. We talked a bit about some of the passing zones and some of the challenges. What do you expect to see here, especially with these brand new paint schemes on this beautiful, luxurious landscape? Yeah, well, first of all, it's great to see that so many new uh, paint schemes coming out. I mean, Radical have really uh, got to town with it, uh, with their paint schemes. We've got uh, the number boards on the cars as well, so uh, a little bit clearer and, and a sort of standard across the championship for the for the number boards on the cars so uh, on the trucks sorry i do this every round don't i just did and um yeah it's it's great to see this and uh, I, i'm glad that i racing is given an opportunity to leave like this like top set racing v8 to be able to have their own uh, identify, identifying number boards, so it's really good to see that. It's the uh, the IRC pace car taking us now on the uh, pace lap here. And a part of many of the updates in the latest build that came just a couple weeks ago was that pace car, in fact, because before, if you remember, was a more blue, white, and red pace car, still had the back wing. Now you have this more, more semi-realistic safety car, to say the least, a beautiful black, red, and white safety car. 
That leads them along the 20 drivers today coming out of Duhan Corner and heading towards the Southern Loop today. Now, of course, with that new build, it did change up a couple things here and there with the trucks. It was more, of course, on the NASCAR side, at least for in terms of the NASCAR bodies, rather. On the cup side, however, it did kind of tweak some things here and there for what some of the drivers come to expect, much so compared to last year. Especially when you think about how much the weather conditions and how much track temperatures can change and how there's day and night, too, that can change throughout the course of a race. Yeah, it's, it's, it just keeps on adding to series like this and other series, but uh, I will point out this series since we're covering it. And uh, it really does uh, add to the, uh, the immersion, the, uh, the, how the, uh, the trucks handle, how the, uh, the racing is as well. And when you add into this as well, that um, in, in a, a few of the rounds in this series, we're going to be seeing longer races. The strategy will come to play in those longer races. So at the moment, we're in what we would call uh, it's the, uh, the sprint races, or it's a super sprint race, sorry, uh, yes. should I say. Uh, but uh, in a couple of rounds, we're going to be having one of those sprint races where they're about 100, uh, 100 miles. So that's going to be uh, a little bit longer for those, uh, those drivers to be uh, racing out there. So... It's great to see and uh, I'm really looking forward to this race because the last two years that we've covered races around here in the V8 Super Trucks, they've always been fantastic. And we have what could be another fantastic race here about to get underway. They head over one of the final pedestrian bridges before the start of the green flank. Pace car heading towards the restart zone today as they'll get set to go for the start of today's round. Round number two of the V8 Super Trucks World Championship heads its way towards the front straightaway to the Gander Straight. And get ready, gets ready to set to go. The Gardner Straight as all the drivers get set to go. Pataska on the right side, Zelensky on the left side. They head past the paddocks. Green flag waving towards the stand. They're off and away. Round number two is underway and we already have a check up in the back. Everyone able to get by clean for the most part, but in big checkup where Eric Blixt was, but Bobby Zelensky takes the oh, race lead and cars the wall. Yeah, we've got a truck off, and that is, As is it Aspen Belvin? No, it's Paul Slavonic. Oh, no, that's a disaster for him. He's off there. We've got another truck falling down the order as well. Oh, uh, is that? Thomas O'Leary. Big drama for Thomas. There we are, but we stay green here so far. Thomas O'Leary overran the Southern Loop. And of course, the calamity we just seen taking place heading to the Doohan corner. Very wild start to this one, but everyone able to get the single foul. Other than that, but Bobby Zelensky from that left side of the racetrack had a much stronger run through the Doohan corner and was able to get by Dallas Petaska, who's wheeling his car now, coming out of turn seven and heading through Hay Shed. Yeah, really tricky part of the track. Single file from everybody, so uh, everybody's behaving, I say that, Danny Solo lost the position, so Thomas O'Leary already started the recovery drive, he's fallen down to 13 after that incident of uh, running out wide, but now he's trying to uh, move his way through the field, and uh, well, I think he's making a play for the Hard Charger Award here today. Yes, for those that don't remember, the Hard Charger did change, as mentioned, in the first round, where it's no longer due to fan vote, and it's no longer where it's the furthest back and charging to the field. If you say have a situation where you have Thomas O'Leary, who fell back to 10th at the time, crossing the start and finish line to finish off the first lap. If he gains a bunch of positions, the most positions gained from those kind of a situation, you will be eligible for the hard charger as a car spins around in front of Thomas O'Leary. It's the truck of Clifton Cockrell now alongside the tire barrier. Try and get a look at that one back there on the screen here. And uh, it's Cockrell. We'll, uh, we'll stay with it here. We're on board. It's going into turn one. Tricky corner is this. So easy to carry too much speed. That back end of the truck just does not behave. Flips the curb. Gets a tank slapper there. And around he goes. Just glances against the wall. So shouldn't be too much damage there. Yeah, but that's going to be a significant amount of time lost on the racetrack already back to dead last. 
in at least 20 car lengths, or truck ranks, I should rather say, to the next spot on the circuit as you now follow along with the race leaders. Dallas Patasca did take a look to the right side through Honda, but still hasn't been able to just find the right spot to get to Zelensky as he does a tire drift. Able to save it, though. And they're just about even in terms of the run. Sven Kamerts is in the third spot. Eric Blix up to fourth. David Williams in the fifth spot. Plus two since the drop of the green flag heading on to lap three. Yeah, we great action here. As all the trucks go by. And uh, really, once again, everybody's showing us. I think there's a little bit of patience going on here. It's kind of hard as run off into the grass at the edge of the final corner. He's able to carry on though, keep it out of any trouble. But uh, Van der Von Blant behind the monitor. His truck has obviously getting involved in that uh, lap one incident at turn uh, one. But everybody still running in this race, still going. So it's great to see no retirements yet. As uh, still that lead battle. Tasca really showed what a force he, he's possibly being. And Bobby Slensky, because he's so busy with um, the NASCAR uh, Peak Entry Series, and he, he's not got the time to put in the Atlantic uh, practice and not the power. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I was listening to that actually in his post race comments. How you mentioned, of course, he's got more than just that series, he's got at least two or three at the very least at the moment running pro series to think about. I want to mention that there was, it's basically to try and have fun more this season. If anything, of course, last year was the dominant driver for much of the year as you look at Eric Blix, meanwhile. Of course, this year has a different team compared to last year, switching to VRS Coanda for the 2019 season. And his teammate David Williams has also shown that both of them still, despite that, have at least the speed to at least maintain top five, if not top three pace. Yeah, certainly. Uh, he has got the pace, we know that. He's the champion from uh, 2017 for no reason. Unfortunately, uh, our champion from last season here today. But, uh, Marco again. And I'll tell you what, yeah. it's, it's Pitaska is not giving this one up. He's counting Bobby Zelensky. Zelensky. He can, we have seen how he can absorb pressure and he could deal with pressure very well. V's off that hairpin to try and get the better exit as Bobby. But he seems to have a better at the moment. Yeah, he has looked really good so far in the first couple rounds. Road, road courses are a specialty while he also does have a strong performance at times in NASCARs, whether it I should say NASCAR oh. cars as he locks it up. Nearly lost control heading into the hard break of an MG. That was a place where a couple trucks last year spun out. Was able to save it that time. That's going to lose him a couple tenths. Yeah, as uh, we've got a truck going slow as well further back. That's Stephen uh, Stegg Jr. Dropping down behind Paul Slavin. Yeah. It's Paul Slavin making recovery drive here after that uh, turn one incident. So he's moving forward there. Um, I suppose he couldn't really uh, write this story, yeah. although he certainly gave it a good go, Paul. Yeah, to get to Steven Dagger, that, why he lost so much track position is he ended up losing control, coming out of Hayshed, went off into the grass and was able to save it along the rumble strips of Lukey Heights. That lost him, of course, a few spots, dropped from 14th last time by to 17th. Paul Slovanic, so, Slovanic, I should say, after his damage, is in 16th spot trying to catch up to Connor Horn, who's gained five spots since the, since the drop of the green flag. Now, I want to mention with Connor Horn, has shown some good speed in various different series, especially this season, is an air talented stock car driver. And it's a ways away to try and catch up to Thomas O'Leary, who's recovered his way up towards the battle now for what would be P number five. I tell you what, 13 to six already. He is uh, he's giving it a good go, but one man who has got to get by is David Williams, who's running out wide there. Williams, he's, he's a tricky customer to get past, and I tell you what, O'Leary has made it through and made it look easy. 
And that's something he can really do and show that kind of a talent that that time able to get the strong run out of the corner ranks of Hayshed and just out breaked it essentially into Lukey, just a out break them rather into Lukey Heights. Now it's the matter of trying to just pull away. It's still a ways a ways though to try and catch up to the front bumper or back bumper rather of Eric Blix. Still separated by two tenths of a second, oh, make it three. The lead battle, look at this, they're getting pretty close through turn one and two. So uh, Tasca Dallas, he, he wants two from two this season so far, but Zelensky is not giving him anything here at all. Let's see what they do this time around as you see Tasca trying to follow the tire tracks. Can he dive it in? He's tried a few different times into Honda to make the move stick. Zelensky moves up the racetrack. Patasca now side by side heading into Siberia. Can he try and make it work on the outside, Patasca? They go alongside the rumble strips, pushing up is Zelensky. They're still side by side. Zelensky tries to side draft, heading towards turn number seven and into Hayshed. Patasca on the preferred line, gets the pass done. He moves up into the race lead. That was brilliant. That was fantastic driving there from Dallas to make that move stick, to get it stopped on the anchors into Honda. And, well, I mean, Bobby, he won't give this one up, that's for sure. And he won't want to see Dallas pull away into the distance. But Dallas now is ahead. He's looked a little bit quicker in the race here. It's a late escape. He's just going to try and hang on, but he's coming through 10th pressure now from Sven Kemmert. And already lost five truck lengths to the front driver in Pataska. What can Kemmert do here? We've seen already multiple times this team try and go underneath them in Honda. You might see the same thing for Cameron. They work their way through the sudden loop once more on the circuit. A bit of a higher line this time, though, by Batasca. Able to get the better launch off Zelensky, though. Now he's definitely struggling. Ran a 132 after that battle side by side. Cameron's 131.9 last time by. He's got the run again into Honda. Not going to dive it in quite yet as, as Zelensky slides it in. Nearly overshoots the corner, but opens up the door for Kemmert. Oh, he, he's going to be feeling that now as Bobby putting that much temperature through that front Goodyear. It really is not going to help him, and he's going to feel the effects of that as we head towards the pit stops. And uh, really, he may even want to come in early in this one. And, I mean, you look at the two VRS plus and six spot cars, uh, Bob Zelensky has lost the lead and he's dropping back from Dallas Potaska. But you've also got David Williams has already dropped back 2.6 seconds from Thomas O'Leary. So radicals with their two teams, they're really, really coming on this season. Yeah, you can see right now the intense pressure from Cameron's pit window opens lap eight. Closes lap number 16, of course, in the series. You do have to make a mandatory pit stop for tires, not for fuel. So that is something to watch for. Pit window going to be potentially opening up this time by as Zelensky actually bobbles a bit off the side of the right side curbs this time, heading once again into the southern loop. But to mention how that short run speed seems to be coming into play for these two, Zelensky, 132.883 last time by. Williams, who's holding up a train of drivers and just got passed by Michael Scurlock for the sixth spot, ran in the 133s. So it looks like both the VRS Command and Simsport machines starting to struggle as Cameron gets towards the back bumper up in front as you look at Williams. Yeah, we, we look at just quickly at that queue of four trucks there. The 83 and the 93, sorry, Francis Gale, almost going straight up there at Honda. But able to stay ahead of Williams. Now, it's uh, teammate, Bunnell, uh, right behind Williams to put the pressure on. Matt Capel's not far off of this battle either, so a nice little train of cars here further down in the mid pack. Technically, they're trucks. They're um, trucks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my mom calls SUVs trucks, so it's technically similar. Similar to it's doing the same thing. Williams, though, getting a bit of a shot from Chris Purnell. He has to check up, actually, as Chris Purnell's damaged the front bumper of his machine. No drivers stuck down on lap number eight this time by. We have to, of course, note, though, at this circuit, that pit exit 
actually cost Zelensky the win last time. He was here at Phillip Island Circuit, messed up the pit exit, ended up losing the, lead, the race to spend cameras in the end of that one. Yeah, that was a uh, really dramatic race that was. Uh, and uh, we, we called that one and it, it shocked us that, uh, that Bobby was able to make a mistake like that. But the best time is to make mistakes. Look at the speed that these trucks are doing through into Honda. It's such a difficult spot and Zelensky yep. again locking up. And the more these guys battle, the more Eric Blix, along with Thomas O'Leary, both try and keep up. Cameron's still able to get the, to the right rear quarter panel, just couldn't keep it stick this time, though, through Siberia. I think Cameron's knows he's faster again this year, two tenths faster last time. It's just about trying to get the proper position and the run. Last time, Pataska got the luck of Zelensky overshooting the corner. This time, Cameron's not getting that same luck, it seems, as he gives him a shot. Zelensky slides his way into the grass. He's off the racetrack in MG. So Zelensky in trouble, loses at least a couple spots, potentially three on a shot heading into MG. Yeah, we'll get a look at that in a minute, but we'll stick with this as fact Zelensky comes into the pit. So we'll use this as an opportunity to look back at that one. Oh, we just caught that a little bit too late. So we'll come back a little bit more. And... Uh, it's into the hairpin, little contact, it just pushes Zelensky, with it be downhill braking as well, it just pushes him, and Zelensky now into the pits, and it's worth noting here, is we've not really touched on it, how easy it is to potentially stall the, the engines on these trucks now. I'm glad you brought that up. In this series, you are not allowed to use the anti-stall assist. That is in a new assist that was a part of the updates as Zelensky does not stall on the way out of the pit boxes. If you don't hold the clutch in when you're in the pit stall and or hold the brake, you have the potential of stalling the engine, having to restart the engine, which takes at least two or three se seconds to recycle the power unit or the ignition rather, and you will not be able to get out, get into really any sort of speed until you get that ignition launched. Zelensky coming out of the pits, as you see, with no troubles. David Williams did have a slight stall, it appeared. So he ended up losing a couple tenths out of the pit box. So that is something all the drivers have to consider. They can even do that as simple as just staying on the grid if you just shift your car, your truck rather, into first, like you might do on instinct, like lots of drivers might do. It's catching, isn't it? <laughs> Call them cars, but yeah, these trucks, they're, uh, they're, they're tricky now, really tricky. And this is this is what this series wanted. They wanted a vehicle that the driver had a lot of input into in terms of how you drive it, uh, but also you want to be, um, they want to be really uh, pushing hard and, and be able to, uh, to see the most out of these drivers and see mistakes made as well. Indeed, and that puts a lot of pressure too on. Uh, that again takes away a little bit of the crutches that some may, drivers may have when trying to say that they might be used to because before this wasn't the case where you couldn't stall the, the cars out. There was actually a hidden shift assist technically as described a little bit before those updates. Danny Saul is now into the pits as you fall along though with Doc Stout. He's into a tight battle now with Clifton Cockrell as both of them try and shuffle things around. They're both ranging around. Doc Stealth, though, ran a 136 last time, so obviously went off the track potentially somewhere to lose three seconds. No, in fact, it was because he was forced side by side oh. by Sylvanic and Horn as he locks it up. Yeah, Doc Stealth, unfortunately. And, and yeah, he's, he's Losing. It's got back onto the road, right in front of Bobby Zelensky here, the man who's been in the pits already. And uh, it's just unfortunate to see that as uh, further down as well. That's been Velvet losing the position to David Williams. And Williams now starting his charge up through the field. And Sven Kermans now onto pit road along with Thomas O'Leary. So we've got two of the Radical team drivers onto pit road. And uh, also, we've got Michael Skirlock. In fact, we've got a bit of a pit lane party here for you today. Chris Purnell also joining the line in. Paul Slovanic, 
trying to dive his way into the pit lane now of course all the drivers must take that lane of course do you see them going down the pit entry however you have to also take the realistic pit exit the first one to show this ben cameras you can't just turn directly to the right you must follow that pit lane along the armco barrier go That's alongside good. the grass and goes on the racing line Zelensky, though this is able to still jump in front of cameras that is an opposite of last year where Zelensky couldn't jump him after that mistake able to do so this year but has older tires by two laps this year yeah this is this is where it's going to show as well and um, it's um, it, it's crazy how uh, how things have turned for Zelensky and he's really got a big challenge this season which is he will, he'll love this he'll have to love it as well let's not forget that but um, still it, it's going to be tricky for him with those old tyres he's got to look after them now the trucks will be a little bit lighter than they were at the start of the race because of fuel uh, being burnt off but still with these hot conditions as the race leader now onto pit road as well these hot conditions, they're really going to uh, have a massive effect on these tyres. That's the Lempel's racing machines coming along. Aaron Karen along with Aaron Smith. Andrew Karen, I should say, not Aaron, with Aaron Smith. All coming down the pit lane, also coming in is Connor Horn, also along with Clifton Cockrell. So they're going to have at least a couple of lap fresher tires. The, uh, the driver's first one to come on the pitch, as you've seen right there, is going to be Dallas Pataska. This is going to get interesting. Where does he cycle in front? He's going to cycle way in front, in fact, at least about five, six, seven truck lengths. Total distance, 1.6 seconds as Zelensky now feels the pressure again from Cameron since he's able to save it. I think there was a little rub there, a little bit of Sven saying, hey, I'll be on here. I'm here to get you. Yeah. And this is what we're seeing right now. Two seconds that between the leader and second place, but Zelensky under intense pressure here. And Zelensky's starting to lose the back end as well, but the lighter fuel means you carry more speed, but also a lighter truck. As now Zelensky really floating around too. He also has that back bumper damage as well from the contact before with Cameras. Cameras with that front bumper damage to think about as well as they work their way through Haitia. They're separated by just under a quarter of a second. Cameras had made contact before last time these two were nearby each other about here. This time Cameras bobbles his way into the corner. Able to save it from the wheel spin and the wheel hop as they work their way out of turn 11 and headed towards turn 12. I tell you what, coming over the top of the hill, Kemmerts was sideways there. Did well to hold on to it. And now he's trying to follow the wheel track to put that truck in front. Both of these Toyota Tundras. And, uh, well, and, uh, and, uh, you know, you, you make a very, uh, it's going to make a very good point here. Everybody's made their pit stop, yeah. so this is, this is how the standings are. Thomas O'Leary, fastest lap of the race. Thomas O'Leary, who cycled to four spots, still six seconds back of the race lead. He's coming in quick to these two drivers. Had closed the gap to about a couple seconds before. He sits in fourth. As you look at your top end on the bottom side of your screen, Dallas Pataska sits in the lead, followed by Bobby Zelensky, who sits in the second spot. For the time being, that can change any moment because Ben Cameron's on two lap fresher tires has been wheeling it, has been much stronger on the short run, Zelensky, pardon me, on the long run. Zelensky, much more stronger on the short run so far. Valeri has talked about in fourth. Eric Blix cycled up to fifth. David Williams fell 14 seconds back of the race lead to sixth. Michael Skorlock in seventh. Martin Kapal rounds out your top eight. Top eight separated by 20 seconds on the circuit. So far, some of the biggest movers in terms of overall positions too. Connor Horn plus seven, Paul Sylvanek minus six so far today as you look on the left side of your screen. Yep, there's your biggest movers and well, enough a mover on the track. is Sven Kevitz getting up the power and finding that the grip is not there for him. And well, he, he, he's giving it everything, but look who's there. It's Dallas Potaska now, fastest lap of the race. So uh, those, those radicals trucks, they're uh, exchanging fastest laps here today. 
Yeah, and that's going to be more challenging for these drivers to try and catch him because he's got the freshest tires on the track. He just set the fastest time by three tenths of a second over Thomas O'Leary's time. For comparison's sake, the battle's still taking place, though, between Cameron and Zelensky. What will happen this time through Honda? Multiple times, Zelensky's been challenged through Honda. Cameron's, though, much more conservative, taking the higher arc. But now they have to deal with another new challenger. Thomas O'Leary has closed the gap to under five, down to under ten truck lengths, and is really charging these corners right behind these two trucks. Yeah, he's absolutely giving it everything. Connor Horn back onto pit road. 16 seconds is the pit stop, and he's uh, back out. Uh, I've not stopped now on time in stream, but uh, yeah, Sven. He is pushing, he's doing absolutely everything. This is going to be the moment. He's sideways going into the corner. Holds it back though. Manages to avoid Bobby Zelensky. But that truck is moving about a lot here. And he'll be putting a lot of heat through those rear tyres. And he's finding it because he's running out wide over the grass here. Yeah, it's a, to the point where you think he might be over pushing. Knowing even though he's got the fresher tyres. It's still going to be mu that much more challenging to try and get by a driver like Zelensky with his pro experience and the challenges he's shown last throughout all the road courses. It, 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 well, I mean, you know, Zelensky is a tough character to get past, but Sven has shown as well that he can make those moves and make them stick. But if he's working, as you mentioned, if he's overdriving that truck and if he's putting too much energy through those rear tyres, they're going to be crying for help by the uh, the time we get towards the end of the race. Eight to go already in this race. This is blown by. For those that are wondering, today's race, 23 laps with the Super Sprint format today. Already down to eight to go, as my partner mentioned, Justin Prince, Paul Smith here in the broadcast booth on Race Spot TV here for the Sox Out Racing V8 Super Trucks World Championship, the second round. Still here at the Phillip Island Circuit. You're still looking at Zelensky still having to defend Camerts. O'Leary down to seven truck lanes, too, heading their way down to MG. Will Camert send it in deep? No, he does not once more. But Zelensky defensive line, and O'Leary, very tough slide right behind him, able to just save it. He's still slipping around right coming out of the corner of turn number 11 right behind these two. Yeah, those radical trucks now moving about a lot. And uh, they're finding it difficult, but this is a good run from Kemmert. So can he hold the speed down the straight, use that slipstream? Turn one isn't the best overtaking spot. You can do it if you're brave, but he decides against it for the time being. But get a good run through one, try and get a good line into two. And he's trying to take that wider line to carry the speed out of turn two. And so let's see if it works this time. Zelensky rides up. It does work. Much stronger run. And this time might be an opportunity. Zelensky tries to mirror drive. They go alongside the curbs. Seven to go around the circuit. Coming to six to go this time as Cameron sends it to the outside. Tries to make it stick for the switch back towards the left-handed turn of Siberia. Can't do it this time, though. They do have lap traffic ahead, though. Von Glass is now coming towards them and quick now. That could be used as a pick as Thomas O'Leary has joined the back of the battle. Yeah, he's joined the party here and he wants to get involved. Now the question is, does he let his teammate Bobby struggle to get by? Whereas Thomas O'Leary, we've seen him with the pace here today. Does he just say, let me by and I'll have a go with Bobby? That's going to be a major question if these teammates decide to do that here. Cameron's much more loose out of turn 11 this time. As you can tell, seven to go, coming towards six to go now as Dallas Pataska passes by the start and finish line just now. They're all separated by about three, four truck lengths. Looking at the times now, Bobby Zelensky in the 132s, Cameron's 132.9, actually slower because of some of the mistakes. O'Leary, though, in the 131.7 range. He's also on a bit of a different strategy. You look at the splits down below. O'Leary, faster than his teammate, two of the past three laps. Yeah, he's, he's really on one here. And Sven running wide again. Through the second corner. He's, I just think he's used the ties up. And I think he's starting to show now 
and O'Leary. I think it might be wise in terms of team uh, standings, in terms of the drivers. It might be worth letting Thomas O'Leary buy. And again, O'Leary getting a bit of power up, power slide on the exit of Honda as well. Little, pull, little bump there from Sven to Bobby Zelensky. Zelensky sideways out of Siberia. And still able to pull away a little bit this time to the hay shed once more as they all go across the rumble strips. Coming to five laps to go this time by as everyone on these slightly different cycles. Let's see what O'Leary decides to do. Camerts breaks in late. O'Leary tries to follow. Able to actually match him on the arc as Camerts again spins the back tires. Yeah, he's definitely overshot those rear tires for sure. He's loose on every single hard breaking corner exit. Yeah, he, he, he's pushed it too hard. I mean, we'll look from uh, Thomas O'Leary there. The laps are counting down here. Five to go in this race. Uh, it would be concentrate so much on this battle for second, third, and fourth. It's worth mentioning David Williams is at the front of a, uh, a few of cars as well in six, seven, and eight. It's Michael Skirlock and Martin Kapal as well. And in fact, they're going side by side down the pit straight. Williams are holding an inside line. Skirlock giving it absolutely everything here. Yeah, this is starting to hold up a few different drivers. You got Skirlock with Lucian Mount Autosport as he gives the bump. David Williams ends up sliding the grass, able to save it, but Skirlock bumps and runs the VRS Coana Sim Sport machine out of the way. Copolo side by side. And look and ahead, look yeah, Sven Kavats and Bobby Zelensky. They were side by side through Honda. They've still not changed positions there. An incredible defensive drive from Bobby. Matt Kapal, by the way, it's worth mentioning, up to six now ahead of Michael Skirlock. So position changing further down and these battles for the podium as well ongoing. That battle just seen Skorlock switch positions on back. David Williams also swapping now with the Lempo's racing machine of Kapal. As you see there with them, still the battle is still up close with that battle going on for second. Bobby Zelensky still defending, takes an early break point this time as David Williams is swamped in trucks. Also still swamped this time by Radicals Online Machines is Zelensky. Past the start and finish line, they go under four laps to go around the circuit. They go all of them down to the 133 second range with Cameron still trying to send it in. Still can't get the run. O'Leary still can't get by either of them so far. And this is allowing Eric Blitz to get back in as Cameron nearly makes contact. I was about to mention Eric Blitz is, uh, is closing up to the back of these. Not fast enough for nothing. And Sven looking to get the overlap. He can't quite get it again as we head into Honda. And Zelensky just holding the middle of that road. Slow it down on the apex there. He's parking it on the apex there. It's great defensive driving here. It's almost a, a, a class, a master class in defensive driving here from Bobby Zelensky. He's doing everything he can to hold on to that second place here. Dallas Mataska 12.8 seconds ahead of this battle for second as Kamertz and O'Leary back up this time away from Zelensky. Heading their way again to MG. We've seen every single time it seems now, especially in the late run, Zelensky break in much more earlier compared to the Radicals Online machines. Again, allows them back in. But there is Blixt. He is knocking on the door in the Lempo's racing machine. Now is in range to make this a four-truck scrap for the second spot with three laps to go this time, Bob. This, this is fantastic. This is brilliant racing once again at O'Leary. I think he's had enough here. He wants by on his teammate. And Sven, I would imagine, is just going to lift off and let him by. So now it's Thomas O'Leary. The man who fell down at the start of the race has picked himself back up and is incredibly he's back into the position where he qualified third place. And that might put him in the range for that hard charger reward for sure. But anything can still happen. He can still get second. Heck, anything can still happen still in this 14-second gap right now. The four trucks now battling for his position. 
quick update past that behind that score lock. Oh. Able to pull away in six. Williams in trouble. Side by side now for the second spot. O'Leary pushes Olenski up the racetrack. Oh, they now no. trade bumper. They go off in the grass. Into Siberia goes Olenski. O'Leary gets collected. Blick sends it in. He goes side by side, door to door. They get bounced around as Cameron gains a spot. And Blix goes from fifth to second in one corner because of one mistake. That is incredible! The two drivers of Zelensky O'Leary came together and then Blix out of all those trucks is just rubbing his hands for joy. He's made it through past them all. He's up to second place here. This is incredible racing here. And Eric Blix now is the least damaged truck out of all of them essentially in this battle. Zelensky looks like his truck's been beat up to heck on the rear and the entire left side of his machine. Two laps to go, and Zelensky now having a fight just to hold on to the podium because Kamertz and O'Leary will both want to be much more aggressive to get by. Kamertz now to the right side. They go into the Duhon corner. Kamertz able to oh, break Zelensky as he moves into the podium spot. O'Leary now tries to laser focus his way to try and get by Zelensky now. I think it's part tires and part damage truck here that was hindering his top speed here for Bob Zelensky. But those set medical cars and trucks, should I say, they have been like wasps. They've been irritating Bobby Zelensky all the way from the start. They've not let him alone. And he's they've managed to get one of them ahead. Sven finally making it in front. And all while this is happening, Dallas Potaska is saying, well, where is everybody? Because he's 17 seconds ahead of this battle. He's been running two to four seconds faster than the entire field a lap as this has all been going on, whether they've been in clean air, some of the drivers, or not. That's how dominant Dallas Potaska has been in this race today, leading from start to finish on the freshest tires than anyone else. Inside the top 10 for sure in this race. Once again, coming out of MG, they go. White flag waves for Dallas Potaska on the front stretch. But anything can happen for the rest of the field. They still battle now for the fourth spot. David Williams still also hungry to try and get seventh back as well as you fall on board with Potaska. Yeah, we've just seen how far ahead he is. The second and third battle of making it across the white stripe of that for the... Uh, the final lap, the final lap, and these two, O'Leary and Zelensky, they're still battling away. They're not giving this one up, and Zelensky, fourth place, and he's getting a lot of attention from Thomas O'Leary there. You look back at the battle as Zelensky again struggles on corner exit. O'Leary once again tries to get the run. Both of them do have left side damage after their contact. Will O'Leary die bomb it in? Yes, he will. He goes to the inside line in Honda. Zelensky tries to pitch. O'Leary tries to push up. They stay side by side. This could determine the position here in Siberia. Can O'Leary hold on to the outside? Zelensky tries to gas in early. They stay side by side coming out of, out of Siberia. We'll look forward though because Potaska is that far ahead. He's about to come across the start finish line. Dallas Potaska, as all of that shapes up, was able to go into cruise control, setting again some of the fastest times all week. He's going to take the checkered flag and win a second straight round in his opening season. Dallas Potaska wins it for Radicals Online JRT. Meanwhile, we look back to the rest of the battles. Eric Blix able to pull away in second. Spend Cameron's in third, but fourth is still on the line. Zelensky tries to defend on the bottom side. Thomas O'Leary can't get the job done. Bobby Zelensky will hold on for a fourth place finish, while Thomas O'Leary will recover from a first lap mis mistake to a top five. Michael Skorla comes away six. Seventh, Monica Paul. David Williams feeling pressure from the man you see in the yellow truck. Aaron Smith with a strong run, but not enough time. He'll finish off in the ninth position. He made a last lap pass on Chris Purnell as all of that was going on as the rest of the drivers try and make their way across the grid, including those drivers, Aaron, Andrew Karen, Danny Sowell, Paul Slavanek, a writer preparing to come away with his first book will not have much to write at home about today, to say the very least, in terms of his run in 13th. 
And Clifton Cockrell amongst the drivers coming home. Rest of the field either a lap down or finishing off their last corners around the circuit. A wild race today, Paul. Yeah, absolutely crazy, crazy race. And uh, we will look back at that, uh, that incident that happened on lap 21 in just a moment. But uh, well, first of all, what we'll do with the final two to get across the line is we will take a look at the race results from today's race. What a race. What a race indeed as the last of the lead lap trucks just crossed the line in Stephen Dager Jr. Let's take a look at your unofficial race results overall today as all 20 drivers have made it to the finish today. Dallas Pataska dominated his way to a 10 plus second win to come away with a second straight round victory in his first season in the V8 Super Trucks World Championship. Eric Blix came away second today after the chaos that happened for that battle for second, going from fifth to second in one corner because of a bumping and baiting match between Kamerts, Zelensky, and O'Leary. They came away third through fifth, respectively. Michael Skorlock came away sixth with Martika Paul in the seventh spot, David Williams in eighth, Aaron Smith in ninth, Chris Purnell rounds out your top 10. Let's look at the rest of the grid. Majority of the privateers ran, ran in these spots today. Andrew Karen came away 11, Danny Sowell in 12, with Paul Sylvanek in the 13th spot, Clifton Cockrell 14th, with Steve Seelstad having a very quiet day. Started 15th, finished 15th. Doc Stout also started 16th and finished 16th. He did gain some spots at one point, then lost them back due to the mistakes. Connor Horn and his series debut came away 17th. And then the rest of the field, Steven Dagger Jr. 18th. Two drivers lap down, Aspen Belvin and Vaughn Glass Glace today. A wild run for sure. Why don't we take a look at that wild battle that happened on lap 21 first? Oh no, uh, yeah, well, let me uh, let me get that to the yes, screen. Uh, Sorry. I <laughs> Doing double duty here, it's, it's pretty tricky. So we'll look at it from the uh, the start of the lap. So uh, it's quite a big gap at the start of the, uh, of the lap there. But it just kept on getting closer and closer between uh, Spence Kemet and some of the Leary as well. As they're coming through the second corner now. So we're heading towards where this is happening. You can see in the background there as well, Eric flips the round here with his little Get the most out of this one, and here we go into the corner there. On the brakes, O'Leary and Zelensky side by side, and they just seem to just get together, get tangled up with each other onto the grass. Oh, they're side by side, sideways, a little bit of bumping, a bit more bumping. And well, they somehow made it all through. We'll try and get another look. Uh, we'll bring it back just a little bit more and we'll have a look from Eric Blitz's point of view. So this is what you can see in front of him here. And uh, you can see those radicals, those two radicals uh, the trucks coming to make the move. There's Thomas O'Leary down the inside of Bobby Zelensky at Honda Corner. Down the inside and then this is where they're going to get together now. A little bit of contact, a little bit of rubbing. They get together onto the grass. Down the inside, Eric Blix, David the opportunist, bang, barges his way past Bobby Zelensky. I mean, it was forceful uh, here, Justin, but you've got to take advantage of a situation like that. Yeah, that was the opportunity to see, to really try and make that kind of a pass. When you see everyone making mistakes, I don't blame him for trying to fit it into the square peg, essentially, to try and make that move work. And what was a crazy finish here today. But the driver that had probably the calmest day today was the race winner today. For the second straight round, Dallas Patasca came away with the victory after dominating Brazil. He dominates in Australia. Dallas, how do you feel about coming away with your second straight round victory? Uh, it, it feels pretty good, to be honest. Uh, I mean... But first and foremost, I couldn't have done it without Sven and Thomas helping. Um, all the sponsors on the car, JRT, Cranfield, Six Sideways. Um, without them, it wouldn't have been possible. But, yeah, overall, it feels pretty good. Uh, it shows that, you know, the first race wasn't a, a dust or knocking off the dust kind of fluke uh, win for me over Bobby and everybody else. So it's, it's another huge confidence booster and uh, I'm really looking forward to moving on. You said, of course, you got a lot of help and your teammates 
also had strong runs. What kind of work did you guys do f on the truck to make sure you guys were the strongest on the long run? Because it seemed a constant compared to especially some of the VRS Coenda trucks that you guys were running around a lot of the time. You guys were m some of the strongest, if not the strongest trucks on the long run. Especially you with the clean air coming away four seconds a lap faster in some cases than most of the field. Uh, yeah, I'd say a lot of it's just uh, our testing strategy. Um, we make sure we can go out and we we set up the trucks to go to the pit stop and that's it um and we we emphasize that because it's very important i mean you can bust off a hot lap but if you can't be consistent seven laps into the run it doesn't matter so we we stick with that mindset and i feel like it really helps us um helps us building the trucks helps us with driving um so overall it's just it's just a testing mindset and i feel like it really pays off for us here it definitely looked like it paid off. Um, what kind of difficulties do you, th do you feel with the world on the track? Some of the drivers actually saying after the checker flag that this is a place that should scare you, to quote Clifton Cockrell. Well, to be honest, uh, a lot of the high-speed stuff I, I really enjoyed. The, the, I mean, the truck was absolutely hooked up um, pretty much right out of the, out of the trailer. Um, it, it was really the slow hairpin stuff because these trucks don't necessarily like hard braking. Um, and then with... With the way the gearing was set up for us, it was, it was kind of hard because a lot of times with the old tires, we'd start wheel hopping, so it made it interesting. But no, for sure, the, the slow hairpins and stuff, for personally for me, were the, always the hardest because these trucks just aren't suited for the, the heavy style of braking. The high-speed stuff, I felt like was all, all right because it was, you know, these trucks are, if there's going to be one good thing they're good at is high-speed cornering. So, But no, for sure, the slow-speed corners were probably the toughest part under braking. Indeed, for sure. Um, it was a strong run today either way. But next round is just in a couple weeks at Sebring. Part of the sprint format, in fact, 26 laps on the 3.7-mile circuit. How do you and your team feel about going to that circuit off in Sebring, Florida? Well, it's a tough track. Um, there's no doubt about it. But I feel like with the group that we have, uh, myself, Sven, Thomas, and anybody else from Radicals that decides to jump in that week, uh, I feel like we can repeat what we've done these first two weeks and continue this uh, strong start to the season. But without a doubt, that's a tough track. Um, but it's one of my f favorite tracks. So I'm looking forward to getting the truck out there and seeing what we can do. Anyone you want to thank before we let you go to be a part that was a part rather of today's winning performance? Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody over at Radicals, uh, Sven and Thomas especially. They put in great work every week leading up to help. I'd like to thank everybody on the car, uh, JRT, Cranfield, Six Sideways, Turn, and everybody else on the car for making it all happen. Thank you very much for the time. Congratulations on the race victory. Thank you. That was Dallas Pataska coming away with round number two's victory today here at Phillip Island Circuit. An exciting race. Standing alongside the second place finisher, I believe, in fact, is Paul Smith. He came away in that close finish, Paul. Yeah, join Barrick, Blixt, and Eric. I, I said in commentary that uh, with those guys getting together, you must have been rubbing your hands with joy at being able to jump the lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I was sort of waiting for... I saw them bunching up, and I thought there might be some trouble. And they ended up tangling together in front of me, so I just had to take the opportunity. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll look at the race as a whole. You started fifth, and you you were kind of in a little bit of clean air, weren't you? You were in your own race and, and just running your own laps. And do you think that that helped you look after the tyres a little bit so that when you did have the opportunity towards the end, you were able to just push that a little bit? Yeah, I think that was part of the reason. And also the setup started working a lot better when the temperatures dropped, when the sun started setting. So after the pit stop, the car was a lot faster in the long run. And, uh, well, I mean, great result for the team for Lempole's Racing. And, uh, you know, looking forward, as we mentioned, Sebring has the next round. What are your thoughts on that track? It's the longer race as well, the first sprint uh, sprint race that we're going to be having. Yeah, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship with it. I don't <laughs> like it, but I always end up having a good result on it. So, yeah, it will be very interesting to do it with the trucks. Now, I, ju I just want to uh, bring it back to that incident. Uh, you ju uh, we looked at it from on board on your truck at the end of the uh, the race there. Uh, was it just a case of you were always going to throw it up down the inside and just, unfortunately, you had to 
make contact with uh, Bob Zelensky with him trying to block you off there? Well, I did, I did send it in, I know that, but I th by the look of it, when they started getting together, I thought it would, well, I thought everyone would kind of spin out, so I went a little bit too deep and got into the grass and slid out a bit more than I would have liked to. But yeah, for sure, I did, I did send it in there, and they all started clashing together. Well, anyway, congratulations. Second place, ever the opportunist, Eric Blixt. Uh, well, congratulations, and uh, before we let you go, anyone you want to thank? Just everyone at Socks Out Racing for making us race. Thank you very much, Eric. Back to you, Justin. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Eric Blixt, uh, for making this race and having the opportunity, but also someone that was trying to wait for the right opportunity for, for passing, was the man who was sitting in the third spot at the checker flag. Someone that was fighting tooth and nail much of the much of the second half of the race to try and pass Bobby Zelensky. Spen Cameron joins us in the broadcast booth, coming away with Thord in the end of things. Talk us through what was going through your head as you were trying to battle for that second spot for really about 10, 15 laps or so with Bobby Zelensky all the way into that climactic finale in terms of how it all unfolded into Siberia, really. Uh, yeah, it was a very exciting race. I mean, I've, uh, I've never, never been in the position where I was actually able to uh, to fight Bobby and I'll challenge for an overtake, actually. So it was really fun uh, to be able to do that. But regardless, I'm not too happy with the, the contact I've made. It, uh, that should have definitely been avoided. But uh, yeah, we definitely had an advantage on the on the setup itself, it really stayed together for a long time. We've done a lot of practice, making sure that the tires held long enough. And uh, well, a big thanks, uh, thanks to that is uh, to, uh, due to Dallas. Basically, spent a lot of time uh, setting this car up. I've just been running laps and trying to adjust my line to suit the setup a bit more. So, but yeah, fun race overall. It definitely looked like a fun race overall, and again. And a challenging battling going on. Uh, how difficult was it to try and pass? Because it looked like multiple times you tried to get the uh, try and set something up, or your teammates rather at times trying to set things up with through Honda. You know, of course, at the contact at MG. How difficult was it to try and pass on the circuit today? Uh, it was very difficult. Um... Every time I did manage to get a run, it was never really good enough. Or every time a team made a small mistake on exit, I wasn't there to uh, to take advantage of it. So uh, it was definitely a struggle to to make the overtakes happen. But yeah, I really had to to time it. And with his, he wasn't uh, he was a bit slow on on all of the mid corners. We had to just back off the entry and trying to get a good run through. But then it's it's a matter of do I have enough front end grip to to get the to actually get out on the line I wanted. So. It was definitely a struggle to, to overtake. We're going to a track that is going to be another challenging circuit overall for the next round on March the 30th at Sebring. A sprint race, 26 laps, 3.7 miles. How do you feel about heading off to that circuit? Uh, it should be very interesting. Uh, I guess uh, we're all going to learn where every bump on the track is because uh, it's definitely going to... Well, the, the track does bring out the, all bumps on all the tracks, so it should be quite an interesting ride to, to get around there. It absolutely should be here. Real quick, anyone you want to thank for being a part of your top three performance today? A uh, big thank you to uh, both my teammates, uh, Dallas and Thomas. I uh, really got put in a great effort for this week. Uh, for the rest of us, like thank our sponsor, sponsors, Cranfield Simulation, uh, Joe Real Timing, Astro Sim Race, My Opinion There for Fact Podcast, U Turns, Immortal, Six Zytrace, and also thank you to Pixel Dust for the brand new paint. <laughs> and thank you very much for the time. Congratulations on third. Thank you. That was Ben Cameron's coming away in the third spot today in a wild race, as mentioned. Of course, a couple times with the contact. Of course, though, the driver that was having the most activity, I think you can say, around him was Bobby Zelensky. Paul Smith standing by with Bobby after this, what was a wild uh, sequence of events, Bobby. Well, or Paul. Well, thank you very much, Justin. Uh, I've changed my name there. But, um, well, Bobby, let, let's just start from the start of the race. Great start to be able to get in front of, of Dallas and to uh, get get in front of him, but uh, it just appeared that those those Radicals cars seem to have that little edge in pace over yourself. Is that something you would maybe agree with today? 
Um, I would agree majorly. Uh, for sure, Coeta trucks were. Um, and this is on me. I just made a mistake in the setup. Won't do that again. Uh, didn't I, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare, and I found something in the setup, and it was pretty good on the hot lap. But it, you know, it, we're just trying to find little gains, and it ended up being horrendous after about five laps, and it just got worse and worse. And that's why I was in such a brawl at the end of the race as well uh the tires were completely dead like the front tires were dead and everyone just had such an advantage it was it was pretty much a broken setup and i was trying to hang on for my dang life and i almost did but uh you know we, we, we did survive for fourth at least but it was completely set up this week last week i wasn't feeling too great about the setup but compared to this week it, it was i had no chance at the wind at all with that um so it, it kind of sucked yeah getting the lead on the start Feeling pretty good, and all of a sudden the tires just died, and it's on me. Well, I mean, I, I, I mentioned it in the commentary. You, you were giving us a masterful display in defensive driving and being able to hold the middle of the road going into, for example, Honda Hairpin and slowing the car the truck down on mid-apex so that you're forcing the other trucks behind to back off as well so that you can then get the launch out the corner. Is that something that you've had to uh, work on in your road racing or is it something that you've just had this ability to do to start with? Yeah, I think it's... I've just always kind of ha known how to do it and from, from you know, quite a few years ago I've kind of figured out how to defend pretty well. Um, yeah, I was trying to bring out every trick I could there just to keep those guys behind me and it was working for a while but then as those final laps came down i would just fall off so much more in my tires that uh yeah it was tough <laughs> but um yeah I, I just doing all the defensive moves i knew doing the best i could on the brakes it was really hard on the brakes oh my gosh those front tires were just not working but yeah, i will say that was fun <laughs> tried to wheel a terrible truck uh to second if i would have been able to do that i would have been stoked but uh We'll, we'll, we'll figure out the setup for next time. Well, that's it. There is always next time. And uh, as you mentioned, it's good that you, you found it so fun because you mentioned last time out, you're doing this a lot for fun. And uh, I'm glad you were able to enjoy it in the end. Just before you go, anyone who quick mention to? Yeah, thanks to Virtual Racing School on the truck, of course, uh, being the main sponsor. And also Quanda Sim Sport, my teammate Dave. Um, I apologize to Dave after the race too, and he's just laughing about it. But yeah, we, we're both on the same setup, obviously, and uh, both both had a tough time. So shout out to him for enduring that terrible car. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I mean, shout out to Dallas for winning again. Um, I'm gonna have to dethrone him. So well, anyway, all the best and uh, all the best for the uh, for the next round at Sebring. Thank you. That was Bobby Zelensky coming away fourth today. Again, a wild finish to show the sense of humor after the race. Uh, David Williams said as after the checker flag, wow, that was horrific. Sad winky face. I, I believe it's sad winky face to be specific. But there was one driver that had a lot of swings of potential emotions and swings of performance today. Thomas Littery started third. Had the trouble that was on lap one that some go as far back as 13th, charged up to as high as 4th. Then Siberia happened, where he came away in 5th. Thomas O'Leary, your obvious hard charger for today, winning $5 in U.S. iRacing credits and coming away in the 5th spot today. Thomas, a lot to process. How are you feeling? Yeah, that was a bit of a roller coaster, wasn't it? I mean, I'm not sure what happened at the start. Maybe there was some dust or bits of rubber on the outside of turn two, but I just couldn't get the car stopped. So then it turned around on me. So that put me at the back of the field. Um, but it gave me plenty of opportunities to practice my overtaking. Yeah, and you're one you're one of the best drivers in terms of overtaking, it seemed, and especially into Honda throughout the day. Talk us through how difficult it was to try and get back to where you can battle for as high as second today after being after that mistake as far back again as 13th and the 10th then being surrounded by different drivers that were really strong throughout the day it was more of a challenge of trying to not to lose time when i was doing the overtaking so i mean planning where i was going to do the overtake so that i'd lose the least amount of time um and so that at the midpoint of the race when the pit stops were starting to occur i was sort of back in the mix as to where i should have been 
And of course, the one question everyone's going to be asking, what was your perspective on what happened into Siberia as the battle go went on for second with Bobby Zelensky and your teammate Sven Kammerts that led to Eric Bliss going from fifth to second in one corner? Uh, that was pretty interesting. I mean, Sven had told me that Bobby was quite slow into the breaking zone there. So I thought, okay, that's going to be the place where I'm going to overtake. And then it was just more of two doesn't go into one. And, well, you, saw, you guys saw what happened. Yeah, lots of chaos there. Um, what was going through you in Spend's mind, really? Being stuck behind Zelensky and trying to find the right place to pass uh, without losing too much time. In the end, by the time you guys reached them, when the battle started with uh, with Spen and Bobby, it was about a gap of 13 seconds to set from first to second. It was 20 seconds at the checker flank. How di what was going through both your really both your minds as that was all unfolding? I mean, Dallas was so far ahead that it, whatever we whatever happened, it didn't matter. We were never going to catch him. It was just a matter of trying to get P2. And it was unfortunate how it turned out. Uh, I didn't see Eric's perspective. Um, but I guess that works out pretty nicely for him. Um, so we'll have to try and get some points back on him next race. Next race, Sebring. It's a sprint race, which is a longer format race. 3.7 mile circuit, as I've said to everyone. 26 lap race as well in the Florida afternoon skies on the international circuit. What do you expect for that race? Uh, Sebring is one of my favorite tracks, so I expect to be fairly competitive there. Um... If it's a longer race, then I guess time management will be more important. Um, but I've, I think that's one of my strengths, so I think we should be good. Anyone you want to thank before we let you go? Uh, just you guys, as always, for doing the broadcast. It's always amazing to watch afterwards. Um, Dallas and Sven for the setup with this week, and uh, I look forward to the next race. Once again, Thomas O'Leary, your hard charger, also your fifth place finisher today. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. That was Thomas O'Leary coming away fifth today. A wild race for sure. And Paul, your quick final thoughts before we say goodbye today. Well, first of all, if I switch my microphone on, that would help. But um, it, was, um, it was a thrilling race once again. Great action on track. And you could see how the drivers had to struggle with those tyres and how the, the track did come towards some people. And it just made for thrilling racing once again. This track always brings us great racing with these trucks. And Sebring, with that slightly longer race, next time out, strategy is going to be key around there because you want to look after your tyres, especially in this truck, around the, uh, the track in Florida. New circuit for the series. And that means new records to break as well. A longer race to see with the sprint format. It's going to be a wild one. Be sure to tune in on March the 30th for round number three. That's made start time, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time here on Race Spot TV. You can also see it on the Socks Out Racing Facebook tw page and Twitch.tv. But it's time to say goodbye for round number two here at Phil Island Circuit. We'd like to thank all our sponsors that you see on your screen. We'd also like to thank AccuWeather for being a part of this year's coverage as the official weather provide weather cover weather prov I should rather say the official weather forecasting provider of the series. For Paul Smith, I'm Justin Prince saying so long, and we'll see you next time for round number three in Florida.